Greetings and welcome back to the third week of the MOC introduction to bio-risk management. In this lecture module, I will introduce you to the concept of the controls as well as the hierarchy of controls and I will describe the manner in which the controls can be applied concurrently to mitigate or reduce the risk of exposure to the biological agent during laboratory operations. The extensive description of each of these controls will be discussed in the lectures which follow during this current week. These are your learning objectives. The first learning objective is to introduce you to the concept of the control or the bio-risk control. The second objective is the hierarchy of the controls and the third is to give you a brief overview of each of the controls. What you should be able to do upon completion of the, this module, describe the concept of the control, describe the five controls and their hierarchy and identify situations in which controls can be applied concurrently. This is the specific definition for bio-risk controls, which has been adapted from ISO IEC guide. Actions implementing bio-risk management decisions are termed as bio-risk controls. Let us look back briefly on this description of the flow. So we commence with hazard identification. We identify the hazards. We then conduct a risk assessment and categorize our biological agent into the respective risk group. We also conduct a risk assessment using a risk matrix as was discussed earlier. We then move on to risk mitigation and this is where the controls come into the picture. Finally, we have what is known as residual risk and it is at this point that you make this decision. Should I proceed with the laboratory procedure or should I not proceed? So if the residual risk is too high or not acceptable, you do not continue with this particular procedure. If it's acceptable, you may continue with the procedure. We will look at the five controls and their hierarchy, and I will describe these controls in detail. The five controls are elimination, substitution, engineering controls, administrative controls, and personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment provide the last line of defense against the biological agent. This is why they are placed right at the bottom of this hierarchy. I will describe each of these controls in detail. The first one is elimination. Let us look at this situation. Your laboratory has been ordered to test samples which are likely to belong to risk group 4. This may happen in a situation such as a pandemic in which you are ordered to test pathogens or biological agents which belong to a high risk group which is risk group 4. However, your laboratory is not equipped with directional airflow. You do not have a containment facility. The staff do not have adequate training and SOPs for waste decontamination and disposal do not exist. So you have multiple limitations. In this case, it is highly likely that there will be a breach of containment. And this is when we resort to elimination. We make a collective decision not to proceed with the laboratory procedure. The next control is substitution. Let us look at another situation. Your laboratory has been ordered to test samples which are likely to belong to risk group 4. This is the same situation as the first one. However, the samples will be inactivated prior to arrival in your laboratory, which means that they will be no longer viable 
and incapable of infecting laboratory workers. Your laboratory is equipped with the essential equipment, which is a biological safety cabinet. And the staff are competent and have conducted work with biological agents categorized as risk group four previously. Now, all of these factors add to the adequacy of your controls. And in this case, you may proceed with the laboratory procedure with caution. This is a case of substitution. So the very fact that the sample was inactivated reduced the likelihood of exposure to the biological agent and the subsequent consequences as well. The third control which we will look at is the engineering control. And in order to understand engineering controls, you need to have a basic understanding of the layout of your respective laboratory. This is a conceptual laboratory, which is an enclosed space. It's just a physical enclosure. Now, let us say that your management decides to upgrade this to a BSL-2 or a BSL-3 laboratory. The first thing that you need to look at is the effluent disposal system, which is responsible for the disposal of all the waste and liquids coming out from your facility. Then you look at the HEPA filtration system. Now, this also adds to your facility as you will have to develop or design two additional flows, which is to house the HEPA air filtration system and your effluent disposal system. So your lab basically gets converted into a three-story facility. Then you have your biological safety cabinet, which is an essential equipment. This biological agent must be hard ducted into the HEPA filtration system and the exhaust released into the environment after filtration. You can now bring in your personnel and your animals in this facility, your experimental animals, and your directional airflow is set into place as well as the effluent disposal system. So you have directional airflow, air which enters the facility is filtered and the pressure within this facility is negative with reference to the external environment. This ensures that there is always a flow of air into the facility and all the air which exits the facility is basically filtered. This represents a containment zone which offers secondary containment. However, your personnel must also ensure that they don proper protective equipment or personal protective equipment in order to work in this facility. So this is a brief description of the engineering control. I will discuss the engineering control in detail in a subsequent lecture. The engineering design is basically governed by the facility design itself. This is where engineers come in. Then you have your directional airflow, your filtration systems, your heating, ventilation and air conditioning system, the effluent disposal system, the plumbing systems, the intelligent controls which may involve computers and other devices which link your laboratory to the network and which you can monitor and control from a remote hosting station as well as the security systems which are responsible for the management of biosecurity at your respective facility. We now move on to administrative controls. So the administrative controls basically comprise the policies as well as the laboratory bio-risk management system. We have our policies roles and responsibilities as defined in the laboratory by risk management manual the standard operating procedures these are very important and we will be discussing these in detail in a separate lecture contingency plans which address emergencies vaccination of personnel training of personnel and audits which form part of your performance assessment We now move on to the fifth control, which is the last line of defense against the biological agent. And this is personal protective equipment. 
These include gloves, different kinds of gloves based on the type of the laboratory procedure. For example, when working with animals, you may have to wear special gloves which prevent bites and scratches. Masks, respirators. Respirators are masks which are fitted with motorized HEPA filters. I will discuss this in detail and provide you with a demonstration of a respirator. Protective gowns which protect your skin from cutaneous infection via the skin which may be in the form of spills. Protective glasses which protect your eyes from viruses which may enter through the ocular route. So these are some of the personal protective equipment which I will discuss in a subsequent lecture. Finally, we move on to the concurrent usage of controls. So controls are used concurrently. For instance, your personal protective equipment must be used concurrently with the standard operating procedure for donning and doffing of the PPE. So the SOP is essentially an administrative control. Entry and exit into the laboratory is governed by an SOP. The laboratory in itself is an engineering control. However, the entry and exit is governed by an administrative control. The SOP for the operation of the entire facility itself is governed by more than one control. This is how the controls are used concurrently. So you may have administrative controls, engineering controls and the PPEs all overlapping with each other. And this is the way in which we manage the bio-risk management system in a specific containment facility. This brings us to the end of this introductory module on risk mitigation. We have learned about the five controls. We have learned about the hierarchy of controls, the concept of residual risk, as well as the concurrent usage of controls. I will delve into each of these controls in a series of lectures during this current week. Thank you very much for your participation in this lecture module and I wish you a pleasant learning experience. Thank you and stay biosafe.